Chafing Armor Podcast, Episode 19, Bride of Death! Welcome back to Chafing Armor Podcast, the only Dungeons and Dragons podcast starring me, Michael Corley. And with me today on our very special side quest episodes is James. James, tell everyone what side quest character you are playing. Hi guys, it's James. Um, I'm playing Cackle, who is a half-orc uh, ranger slash rogue. And... Uh, Rather a swarthy character. Yes, he is a ne'er-do-well, to be certain. But a slightly less ne'er-do-well is Lee. Lee, please tell everyone what side quest character you will be playing today. G'day everyone, I'm Lee. Uh, I will be playing Tucker, the human monk with a secret. That is absolutely correct. There is a lot going on with Taka that we do not yet know about. When we last left our two adventurers, Cackle had gotten a lead on an incredible score, a score that would be so valuable if he managed to pull it off, he would be rich for the rest of his life. And that was half of the Rod of Seraphin. Half of the rod that supposedly could save the world had been found by a goblin, a goblin who calls himself King Midge and has uh, sequestered himself in Castle Pradlethorn. For various reasons, uh, Taka, the mysterious monk, has decided to group with this ne'er-do-well cackle, and they went to the castle. There they found strange creatures in the moat. There they found slimes. There they found a giant troll doing a wedding arrangement. Taka, being somewhat mischievous, uh, did, in fact, uh, set the troll on fire and closed the door behind them. They then made their way to the main auditorium, where Taka set yet another fire, called out for fire, and waited to see what chaos would ensue. What came running out were not goblins, but a dwarf. A dwarf dressed in bridal gowns. And that is where we left off. I should say one more final thing, that Cackle had sequestered himself up in the rafters to get a good look and to get ready for archery fire. And that's when this dwarf comes running towards you, Taka. What would you like to do? Okay, so is there any way or any place nearby that Taka can attempt poorly? to hide themselves behind. This is an enormous castle. If you were to step into the main auditorium area, which is, you think, the main hall as well as the throne room, there would be virtually nowhere to hide. However, you are still outside. There are many places where you could try to hide right now. Okay, I will choose the nearest one if possible. Okay, and I would like you to roll a stealth check for me. Okie dokie, let's... There we go. So... Wow. Not my best skill, but... That is a 18. An 18. And I've got a perception check here. Wow. That was a really good perception check. You duck in the corner, and you very successfully do so. There is a recessed area. You think maybe some kind of religious artifact or something would normally be there. Uh, but as this bride comes running out... Uh, it spies you and then turns and look, you think because it's looking for a way out, and runs straight over to you and says, uh, by the way, it rolled a 17, and with uh, their perception, that was well over your stealth. Mm -hmm. um, and it says, please, you've got to help me. You've got to get me out of here. In a deep, bass, profundo uh, dwarven voice. <laughs> Taka will nod and hold their finger to their lips and motion with their hands to uh, 
not reveal their presence if at all possible um and whisper just play along okay um he whereas you you can absolutely tell that it is a he mm-hmm. dwarf because uh, he's looking imploringly into your eyes uh he is wearing a, a bridal dress a very <laughs> traditional bridal dress mm-hmm. uh and he has the most inexpert uh, if you imagine if someone was trying to do a drag show but did not know how to apply makeup, uh, that is what is on his face. I mean, it has just been like like someone just scooped into the paint and just smeared it across his face. Like giant red streaks for each cheek and this weird gold stuff just kind of globbed on his eyelids. Think, um, and Homer's, it, think and, Homer's makeup gun from The Simpsons? Uh, yes, yes, perfect. Perfect example. Uh, he ducks into you. He's stumbling a little bit because he's wearing uh, some kind of high heels that do not fit him well. Um, but he's stumbling in there and uh, he's muttering to himself. He's muttering to you, thank you, thank you. You've got to get me out of here. He's trying to whisper, but he's also a dwarf. Okay. Uh, Taco will wink and go, nice outfit, and <laughs> continue calling out fire. All right. Uh, you see several goblins come streaking out of the throne room. Uh, they are dressed in very nondescript uh, guard regalia. There's no sigil. There's no emblem. But you do see that it's all the same. It looks like, like it, it actually looks even more the same than you would normally see like from a town guard. Like It looks like they were all just cloned one after the other the uh, uniforms not the goblins the goblins do look all different but they come running out uh and they're scooting all to and fro and some of them have found the fire uh that you you can see them but it's it's a little ways off because you said it and then came back here uh and they're trying very ineffectually to put it out like one of them has literally like torn down one of the incredibly expensive tapestries and thrown it on and boom it's gone up in flames they're not doing very well with that. Uh, I'm going to cut to Cackle. Cackle, you had actually snuck into the throne room. Right. And had obscu- uh, had had crawled up the side, and you've wedged yourself between where the beams come into the ceiling. Uh, so you're actually in a kind of tidy little spot, and it's actually a pretty good hiding place. Like, this, this is the kind of place you want to be. You know what a good-feeling hiding place is and what a bad one is. This is a good right. one. Um, what you see is you see exactly that. Several, um, about a dozen goblins come running out. And in the main throne room, you actually only see five other goblins of normal size. And they are standing at a dais where the throne would normally be. And on this dais, on this this huge circular medallion-looking thing, sits a monstrosity. Now, you're someone who hangs out with monstrosities right. um, at the bunting. You hang out with trolls and all kinds of things. This thing is roughly the size of an ogre. So it is enormous. But you can tell it used to be a goblin. Eek. Yeah. It has grown and grown. Of course, a goblin is many times smaller than a an ogre could grab a goblin with one hand and crush it. Um. And it is not just fat, but it is grotesque. There are spines coming out of its uh, spinal column. There are at least two extra limbs that don't appear to be serving any purpose. But what your thieving eyes uh, uh, most immediately lock on is unmistakably in one of its huge meaty fists is the broken rod of Seraphim. Uh-huh. Well, and at least you, my information was good. Exactly. And and there is no mistaking it. It is radiating power. Even you who are not particularly magical, you can feel and, and I, I you're again, you are not this is not Pinton. This is not a magic user, but you can feel something very wrong with this device. Uh even from this distance. There's something very, very wrong about it. And um uh the the king, King Midge, you hear him yell out, but he's still got this incredibly high voice. He says, uh, you know, 
that find my bride, find my bride, I must be married to her. Uh, and the rest of the goblins go out, but these five appear to be some kind of honor guard, and they remain guarding the uh, dais. And that is what's happening inside. I wanted to check with you, see if there's anything you want to do before we move forward. Okay, I'm checking... Um... A spell, believe it or not, really mm -hmm. quick here. You are a level five ranger in addition right, to so I have level some, five. Yeah, so I have some rudimentary spell skills here. Mm -hmm. I'm just checking to make sure something would work in this environment. I'm looking at Entangle right now, and I want to see if it works well. It doesn't really say. Is there any kind of like plant life in the room at all? Yes, uh, there is, because there is a uh, huge floral arrangement. <laughs> all around the dais. Uh, as you look more closely, this place has been extremely inexpertly set up as a wedding chamber. Uh, okay. As someone who has no idea what they're doing, but has heard of weddings, has tried to set this up. And so there are actually, and some of them are literally just like small trees that have just been stuck like like where you would normally put like flowers. Uh, so there are absolutely vegetation here. Okay. All right. So that sounds like a plan, and it sounds ironically fun. Um, so uh, I'm going to cast Entangle on that, and it's going to basically engulf the dais um, so that everybody in that area needs to make a DC 20 strength check or escape artist check in order to get themselves free um, and be able to uh, move at half speed until they can get out of the area. Otherwise, right. they're just stuck. Okay. Uh, then uh, you do not need to roll for that. So I'm going to roll a few uh, things and see. Get three. One. Oh, we did get one natural 20. Okay. But everyone else. So I'm, I'm going to say one of the goblins was kind of hovering towards the edge. Like he was debating whether or not to go and help the others. So he was a little further away. But everyone else is absolutely just you see this tree that it was clearly supposed to be like a potted plant you know but no one else would think that just erupt outwards and engulf everyone including the king is engulfed in this uh to which he begins shrieking incoherently in rage hmm. um and he's just like he doesn't even he doesn't even know what to say he's so angry and actually, as you're watching him, he's shaking the rod of seraphim. You see it glow, and you actually see, like, the hand that's holding it, like, grow, like, 30%. Like, just... Oh, dear. And just kind of engorge a little bit more. Um, but the rest of the goblins are absolutely trapped in there. And now we're going to cut back to Taka. Uh, Taka, you see the dozen or so other goblins running out to try and put out this fire. And you hear screaming from inside, uh, and you hear the high voice of the Goblin King. Uh, what would you like to do? Okay, so if you remember the last session, I set the fire somewhat down the hallway, and then yes. close to where I am, I spread a line of oil again. Um, yes. Are the goblins past that second line of oil? They absolutely are. I'm going to set that line of oil on fire, and any gap that may have been there, since there wasn't a whole lot of oil, I'm going to put the yellow gunk that I collected from <laughs> the wall of the sewer in those gaps. Um, I wondered if you would remember the yellow gunk or not. Uh, yes, I'm, going to, I'm going to keep a small amount um, in the bag, as I have a use for it, uh, mm -hmm. but that's what I intend to do, and then I'm going to... Uh, once again, gesture to the dwarf to keep silent, uh, give him a wink, and head into the throne room. Uh, just uh, bold as brass. Okay. Uh, I do not need you to roll to succeed on lighting the fire because it's just soaking oil, and there's yep. and there's not a time factor here. So you light that fire and. It goes right up. Now, you know it's only going to last for a few rounds, because obviously yep. it's just oil on the ground. But uh, I would like you to make a dexterity save for me. Okie dokie. That is still my one of my best. Mm -hmm. 
You are a monk, after all. That's a nat 20, plus my ah. dexterity of plus 4, that's 24. Well, uh, I'm actually going to apply that nat 20 in the future, uh, and you'll see why in a minute. But what I was okay. checking was to see if you could apply this gunk without burning yourself. Okay. Uh, not the fire, but the, the, the mold itself, whatever it is. Yep. Uh, is it does not like being touched. No, it does uh, not. As you all found out, especially Cackle uh, mm -hmm. coming in Yeah, there. that's for sure. And uh, But you just perfectly get it right in the cracks. And uh, as you're walking in, by the way, you see down the hall, as you just, you think it doesn't see you as you're walking in, you see that battle troll mm -hmm. come hurtling down the hallway. And it's on fire. It is on fire, which means that it had to get its will save up and run through that burning uh, trap that you set. Run through that wooden door, which some of the wood appears to be on fire. Uh, and it's clearly looking for you. It saw you, by the way, as you closed the door. Um, but it doesn't see you now. And in fact, it falls up short because there's a big line of fire that you just set. <laughs> uh, and you're very, very glad that you did that, because if you hadn't, you have no doubt that it would have come into the throne room after you. Uh, one, if it saw you, but two, it probably would have come in there anyway. And it is on fire, and you cannot, I cannot describe to you how much murder is in its eyes. Oh, I can imagine. And since it is on fire, and it's weak to fire, hopefully it's taking damage. So if we ever do have to... Uh... Try and bring it down. Try and bring it down. It'll be a little easier to do so, yes. Um, this this troll has absolutely taken damage, yes. So uh, we'll not worry about the troll for now. We've got a few rounds before we do that. Yes. Uh, but now I will... Taka is not going to betray the surprise at the sudden expanse of nature in the, in the throne room. Or mm -hmm. the, the wedding hall, or whatever it's called. Um, even though this is odd. Um, and I'm going to... Taka is going to pretend to be the officiate for said wedding uh, by, okay. by, again, walking Boulder's Brass into the, into the, uh, the big auditorium area, clapping their hands and going... Uh, well, 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 where is the bride? Where is the bride? Where is the bride? <laughs> we need to get this started, I yes. I have a uh, very high performance skill. Yes, so I will roll that now. Okay. That's a 19 plus 8, so... 27? Okay. Yes. Well, uh, I want you to know that, like, you have a great deal of experience in performance. So you do succeed in this. But what I want you to know and what you realize, because you've bluffed your way into so many things throughout your many years, mm -hmm. uh, you know that this may not last forever. No. This isn't like a done deal that, like, okay, well, now they just believe you. But they do believe you right now. The um, they, the goblins who are trying to get out and are, are slowly at half speed making their way out of the uh, entanglement stop to look at you. And the king, who is just incoherent with rage, turns and he looks at you and he says, Have you found my bride? All right, we're going to continue pushing and uh, clapping, continue clapping, going, You mean she's not here? I come all this way for nothing. How dare you, good sir? I have a mind to leave right now. Uh, he does not like your attitude. He does not like being spoken to in that way. You have a feeling since he's picked up this rod that anyone who's spoken to him that way has died. Uh, but he's very focused on getting the bride right now. And he's also entangled in these uh, vines. However, mm -hmm. instead of disentangling himself, he waves his wand and a fireball shoots out in front of him, clearing a path through the vines. Uh, and... <laughs> Maybe taking out a few goblins with it? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, 
let's see. Yes, it only it, it is only because it's a straight line. So it only take but one of the goblin guards is incinerated. I mean, there is nothing but smoking bones left. You would not have wanted to get hit by that. <laughs> um, and it clears a path through. So there are now four goblin guards for the moment. Uh, and there's now a clear path from the dais. But much in a kind of Jabba the Hutt type fashion, you don't really get the idea that King Midge moves a lot. So <laughs> you're not quite sure why he did that, more uh, out of annoyance or anything. Uh, cl- and you also suspect that maybe with this much power, he could have just made the vines disappear, but that maybe that was just the first thing that came to mind. Uh, and that may give you both a little bit of insight to mm-hmm. his state of mind. Okay. Um, and he says, well, well, find her, find her. Uh, uh, okay, so Tucker obviously saw where Kaka went. Yes, um, he, you know he. You don't. You don't see him, but you know he's in here somewhere. Yep. Um, I'm going to turn my back from King Midge um, with confidence and look in the general direction of where I watched Cackle walk up, run up the wall and incline my head slightly. Um, hoping Gackle gets some sort of idea and then turns back to King Midge and says, It's not my job. You have four guards here. Get them to find her. My job is to make sure this wedding goes smoothly. It's not my job to find your bride. It's your job to keep her. He turns, and and this actually works. Uh, This works not because of your words, but because you turn the attention from yourself to the guards. And he turns to the guards and he goes, Why haven't you found her yet? And one of them even says, you know, My lord, you told us to not never leave your side. And he, he doesn't cast a spell. He just backhands him, just smacks him. Uh, and like, you know, it, it knocks him to the ground. They, they've more or less distant. They've still like got a few, like a half a foot in the uh, entanglement now. And he waves his wand or his the rod of seraphim, and instantly all four of them are in the best plate mail armor you've ever seen. And in fact, each of them is identical to the other. You have a an idea of where those uniforms came from earlier. Uh, each of them is in the finest plate mail. You 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 can't even imagine how many gold each one of these must have cost. Oof. And each of them have a giant uh, claymore sword, two-handed sword on their back, and each of them have a tower shield in their on their arm. Um, there is one problem with that: they're all goblins. They can't move, uh, and they they can barely move <laughs> in these. Uh, and clearly, this is just his idea of what his guards should be wearing when going out into combat. And so they don't dare, you can tell, say anything. And they're just barely able to move forward as they're heading out to try and look for the bride. Uh, And all of them, all of them are leaving. And, uh, but now his focus is turning back to you. And he says, um, so are you ready to perform the ceremony? Tucker will give a flourished bow and say, once the bride is found, my lord, we can continue. And why haven't you found her? And he fires a bolt of energy at you, and I would like you to make a dexterity saving throw. All right, my reflex save. Uh, Tucker also has... uh, Whole, uh, wholeness of body, which means mm-hmm. even if I fail, I only take half damage. Gotcha. But I won't need it. That was a 19. Plus... 19. Uh, dexterity or reflex, so plus 11, so that's a 30. 
it would Jeez. be fa- it would be fair to say that you were kind of expecting something like this, and much like before, you almost make it look like an accident, like you kind of step to the side a little bit, like as if you're considering something. And this, you're not quite sure what it is. You're not a magic user. It wasn't a fireball, but it was some kind of uh, lightning type power, and it just just destroys part of the wall. Uh, uh, and in fact, you, part of you is thinking, gee, I, I really hope the dwarf isn't on the other side of that. He <laughs> might have actually been injured, but you don't think he is, but you're not 100% sure. Okay, and as that happens, as I turn around, I will, uh, I'm will. i going to try and use a diplomacy check to change his demeanor, while saying okay. at the same time, calm yourself, Lord. You have dispatched your guards, and I'm sure they will find her in time. All right. That is a 16 plus 4 for diplomacy, so that's a 20. Okay. He calms down a little bit, and you see him... He he Calm down is the wrong term. He stops attacking you, <laughs> is the closest you're able to get. And that's all I was after. <laughs> yes, he's shaking with rage, and you see him just... Just both hands are just fists, and they're they're quivering, and you actually see a spine, like a long spine, like something you'd see on a dinosaur, just boink, just come right out of the side of his neck, and it's just sort of just quivering on the side of his fat and muscle uh, distended there, as he's just shaking with rage, and you you have calmed him for the moment, but you don't know how long that's going to last. Okay, Tucker's mind is racing, and they. They are fomenting an idea. Um, however, I would like to see what Cackle's next move is before I try to put the idea into motion. All right. Well, okay. I can tell you what Cackle's next move is. He is uh, drawing a bow, <laughs> and he is going to take aim at the um, at the king's hand that's holding rod beautiful okay. that's exactly what i was trying to intimate that's a perfect <laughs> oh wow perfect okay. um and uh let's see a uh, cackle does have precise shot Excellent. um so i can shoot with characters engaged in melee without a minus four penalty um but since i'm calling a shot i imagine there's going to be some sort of penalty involved there uh that's at the discretion of you of course mr dm well that's going to affect the difficulty However, right. I'm not. I'm not actually going to assign a penalty per se, but it's going to affect how high you need to roll in order for this to succeed, or okay. total total bonus. Okay. Um, so I think I'll take that shot. Let's see what we hit with here. Sixteen. Ah, uh, that'd be a thirty. Uh, 30. <laughs> so you imagine Cackle, and he's got his feet braced uh, against the beam. Uh, there's sort of a triangle where these different pieces of wood come together. You also can feel that they're rotting, uh, just like the rest of this castle is. Mm-hmm. But for now, they are holding steady. You lean to the side ever so slightly, take aim... Uh, you exhale your breath and and the he's holding the rod so his hand is closed in a fist so what actually happens it's not even the wrist it's that that little indescribable place where the hand becomes the wrist it just buries itself right in there and please roll for damage uh, sure. Um, this is a sneak attack, so I'll have an extra 3d6 on top of that. Gotcha. And, and while that's happening, um, Taco would like to make a dive for the rod before it hits the ground, if he drops it. Okay. Okay, so that's 8 plus... That's a total of 17 points. 17 points to one hand damage. He does drop the rod, okay. and he shrieks. He just shrieks at the top of his lungs. It is. It actually is painful. If if either of you were closer, you actually probably would have taken damage. It's that bad. And you actually see, like, dust coming down from the ceiling and little bits of gravel and such. Um, and Taka, I would like you to make a roll to catch okay. that rod. Taka has, enhan- Taka has enhanced speed. <laughs> 
and agility. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they will make a leap towards... That is a 20. Ooh! Uh, (laughs) Plus... Natural 20. Natural 20 plus... uh, I'm going to say tumble, so that's plus 16, so that's a 36. (laughs) (laughs) So what happens is this, you know that you cannot miss this. This is too important. You're running, you actually drop your quarterstaff, which for a monk is not as critical as it might be for other types of melee. But you drop your quarterstaff and leap through the air. You just snatch it right out of the air about four inches from the ground. Because, of course, you had a decent amount of distance to cover. And you actually do a little tumble. You do a somersault and come up on the other side of the dais. And I need you to make a will saving throw. I saw that coming. Yep, so did I. But thankfully, wisdom is my second best. That is a 16 plus 9, so 25. Uh, You feel... You can't even describe it. You just feel indescribable power um and it's not this isn't a lord of the rings kind of thing where it's like hey buddy do evil do bad it's the will to maintain your own chi this rod is trying to suck the chi out of you it is trying to suck the very essence of your soul out of you and you remember the training of your master where he would have you stand under a waterfall and till your your skin would begin to crack and bleed. And you would ask him, when can I stop? And he says to you, when you stop asking that question. And you are able to hold on to the center inside yourself, the center of your chi that's just above your navel, keeps its focus. But you know one thing for sure, you need to not be holding this in your hand much longer. You've got okay. seconds before it does something horrible to you. I can I can feel this, so I... You know what, let's and try this. Let's, let's uh, try this. Cackle, enti- I also want to tell you, you actually see the energy radiating out from this, but then okay. you actually see the energy going into it. Uh, the energy of this room, which normally you would not be able to see, because again, not a magic user, but you right. can literally see the a physical manifestation of energy flowing into the rod, trying to flow into it, uh, as Taka does what he's about to do. Okay, so uh, Taka, it's in Taka's nature to do this, so we're going to go for a flourish to toss the rod into Taka's pack. Okay. (laughs) Um, So that it is no longer touching any part of Taka's body. So that is... Oh, my, my dice are so nice to me today. Why couldn't <laughs> I have this yesterday? Uh, that is a 19 plus dexterity of 4. So that's a 23 total. You have never been so happy to let go of something. And you remember your master making you hold burning hot iron and... Uh, you know, all kind, you know, freezing cold ice uh, for hours on end. And yet you never have been so happy to let go of something. You toss it up into the air. It's flipping end over end over end. And in that same motion, the pack comes off your back. You've undone the strap. You've opened it up and it goes into your pack and you snap it shut. Uh, You still feel it. You absolutely still feel it. An article of this power uh, is very, very palpable, but it is no longer trying to suck out your soul. <laughs> that's um, all I needed. And that's when y- you both hear something. It's not just the scream of King Midge. You both look up because you hear a sound, and something is coming out of his wound. And it's not blood. It's energy. And... Neither of you need to make a perception check, um, but you're... Well, I, I, I say, Cackle, it's kind of a calculated risk for you. Uh, you might be better off staying where you are, but Taka, you're going to want to find some kind of cover. Okay. Uh, 
and I'll leave it up to you. That's how far this is geysering. What, what, what is near me? Is there a window in the rear wall behind the dais? Oh, yeah. There are several windows. Uh, now, they're a little high up, but again, you're a monk. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know that you're high up. So if you actually smash through that window, you might be coming out open air to a very long fall unless you're able to successfully catch the other end when you okay. come out. How far, how far away is my quarter star? Uh, it's only, behind it's you, so it's, it's yeah. probably only about 15 feet from you. Okay, so I think I'm going to have to sacrifice my quarter staff at this point, but I also have... Uh, no, I do not, because the gauntlet is outside. Um, okay, well, I have acrobatic, I have agile, I have tumble... Uh, Tiger's just going to go for it, um, with a quiet, uh, prayer to St. Cuthbert. Uh, Tucker is going to dive out the window uh, okay. by taking a running jump or ru- a, a running start, pushing off with one foot onto the wall and then crashing through the window. So, okay. Uh, and let's yeah, let's try this. As as I crash through the window, Taco is going to turn and try and catch the sill on the way down on the other side, keeping okay. the wall well, between uh, himself and the impending whatever it is. I'm glad that you called that because that's going to be necessary because <laughs> uh, you're about at least fifty feet up in the air. Okay. Um, and when you come out of that window. So I first need you to make a roll to succeed in getting through the window. And then I need you to make another roll to succeed in catching onto the sill. Okay, so the roll to get out the window was an 18 plus my climb of 14. Okay. Uh, so that's 32. Uh, to catch on the other side, I will use uh, my... Uh, can I use my acrobatic? Uh, okay, I'll just roll for that. Um, and that's a natural 20. <laughs> so that's what you see, Cackle, is you just see the streak going towards the wall and a foot plant and a smash of the window. Uh, you do take three points of damage going through the window just from the window shards and uh, debris. Uh, but as you twist around, your one hand pop, catches that sill uh, right before whatever's about to happen happens. And you're dangling 50 feet in the air, by the way. Yep. Um, Cackle, it's your call. You can either stay here, which will offer you the protection of these thick beams, or you can try to run for the exit and to get around the stone wall. Okay. Well, the exit is currently on fire and has a battle <laughs> troll in it, correct? Uh, yes. You can't see the battle troll, though you can hear... I mean, obviously, you know the I, goblins I can hear them. <laughs> yeah, and you can hear the goblins out there for certain. Right, and they're, yeah, they're the ones trying to put out the fire, right. Um, so it's that, or I stay here, or I try and make for a window, um, which is quite oh, a yeah, feat yeah, from can, where I'm you at. You can try C if, if you can think of something else. Okay. Um... Did I happen? In, uh, did, was was I aware of where the dwarf went from my vantage point? Just outside. You don't know where he went after he. You saw him go out, but you don't know where he outside. Went where, outside through where? Uh, outside through the main entrance where Taka came in. Okay. Okay. Um. You know what? I'm. 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 I'm uh, as mad as I am that he took off with my rod. Um, I'm kind of interested to see what's going to happen with this goblin. And I feel like I'm at a safe enough distance that if he goes gush, I'm not going to get too splashed <laughs> by, the, by the excess. So um, unless he's geysering energy anywhere near me, um, I think I'm going to take a breeze and, uh, and uh, see what happens. Well, that part was a good call on your part. Uh, because as far as the potential damage that you could have taken, you will not take any from that. 
because you were at a safe distance. There was obviously no way for you to tell because you don't know what happens when uh, magically infused goblins explode. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, that is exactly what happens is uh, you don't know for certain, but like you've been around the block a few times. What seems to have been happening is energy or magic or chi or whatever has been flowing into this goblin. And now it's coming out. <laughs> uh, you, neither of you would have wanted to be at ground zero because you doubt either of you would have survived regardless of saving throws. And then there is a good 20 feet from that where your life would have been very unpleasant as this just... Boom, but it's not like a um, grenade blast that just keeps radiating outwards. It's actually a very defined semicircle that goes out for about 30 feet in every direction. And when it clears, you actually see that like part of the floor has just been evaporated. Like it's just gone. The dais is gone. Uh, and, you know, y'all don't think in terms of like nuclear blasts and things like that. But you know that nothing could have survived right there when it went off. Uh, there is one other part, and I have a, a, a big half dollar here, and I'd like you to call heads or tails. Ooh, me? Yes. Uh, I'm going to go with tails. Whoops. Sorry, I got a big old Eisenhower here. Um, so the ceiling collapses. Uh, um, not entirely, but the part that you're on collapses, so I would like you to make a saving throw. Okay. Uh, re sure reflex, of course. Right. Make sure that I don't have anything here that's going to help with that. I'm good at going up, but not as good as going down. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, no, okay, so it's just straight up. Dex or reflex? Uh, reflex. Oh, that's better. Okay. Uh, reflex save would be team uh, 30. 30. Okay. So what happens is the ceiling collapses, and, and I don't mean the entire ceiling. I mean huge chunks of the ceiling collapses from just the shockwave of this blast. Because uh, even though the magical energy is contained in about a 30-foot radius, the there's still a shockwave that goes out. And right. the beam that you were on just falls down entirely. And what happens is you're able to leap to the side and you're able actually able to catch part of the wall as you're coming down. Your fingers are a little skinned coming down, but you kind of catch it as you're going down. It's you, you really wish someone had been there to see it because it was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there is now the settling of the dust. Taka, what would you like to do? Okay, so that's happened. Uh, uh, since I just caught and I didn't actually see what happened, I'm going to take a peep inside okay. and see the what damage has been done and whether or not Midge is still in action. Is okay. Midge still in action? <laughs> um, what you, by the way, what you saw hanging with one hand outside the windowsill is you saw every other window blast, and you see you you heard the sound of you know falling stones and things like that. You peek back at obviously you put both hands on because uh, yep. you're you're not just trying to be cool. You don't want to fall to your death, uh, and you peek back inside, kind of lift your your upper torso, and you can see inside that uh, there is just this smooth indentation where the dais used to be. Uh, there is no sign of Midge whatsoever, and part of the ceiling has collapsed, and you can see on the very other side of the hall, which is quite large, uh, you can see Cackle holding on to part of the wall, and he seems mostly intact. Okay, so before anything nasty happens, we are going to... Or Taka is going to hop back through the window as quickly as possible. Um, so I'll get another climb check, which is a good one. Just, that's 16 plus uh, 14, so 30. Uh, okay. Uh, there's uh, you, you felt very confident, but I, I was going to make you roll, but that's more than good enough. You just 
<laughs> heave yourself in, do a quick little flip, land on the ground in a yep. in a moment of complete incredulity. Uh, you don't know if it rolled or you know if it was part of the blast. Your quarterstaff is still there. It's 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 like of all things, you're like that's that's inconceivable <laughs> that that would have survived. Oh, let's go uh, pick it up. <laughs> yeah, and you it's it's absolutely fine. It's smoking slightly on the on one edge, but it's absolutely fine. Um, and now several things happen simultaneously. Um, the dwarf comes running in through a hole in the wall, uh, where part of the wall collapsed. Uh, the four guards come stumbling in. <laughs> One of them is on fire. You're not quite sure how he managed to set plate mail on fire. You would assume he got some oil on it. Uh, two of them are trying to get the mold off them. Uh, only one of them has his giant claymore out and he's dropped his shield because he can't hold both. Uh, it's entirely impractical. Uh, and he's barely holding on to it. And they're, they're clanking their way inside. And as they come in, the battle troll comes barreling in after them and just knocks them all to the side. And half of his face is scarred with fire. The fire has gone out, but he is smoking. And he is badly damaged. If a human took this much fire damage, he would be dead. Uh, but he's a battle troll. He's enormous. And he's really tough. And he sees you, Taka. Um, and I would like everybody to roll for initiative. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wish my dice were playing like this yesterday. I really do. <laughs> uh, where's my Let's see, I've got a 16. 16? Okay. Uh, so do, I've got a 20 total. 16 plus 4. So. Well, Taka, you absolutely get to act first. Okay. So Taka is going to... Taka doesn't have anything like this, but you know what? It's well within their nature. So Taka is going to take the last little bit of the mold and is going to toss it at Mr. Troll's face. Okay, that is a dexterity, uh, plus dexterity uh, throw. Uh, I do need to give you minus two because it is an improvised weapon. That's fine, because that gives me a total of 24 then. It was 26. Uh, As I mentioned before, he is wearing armor. uh, So he is not only a troll, but he is a battle troll in not full plate well, but he does have a chest plate and partial chain. Uh, But that, that beats it. And you smack him in the other side of the face uh, with it. <laughs> and I would like you to roll 1d8. 1d8? All right. Uh-huh. That's eight. <laughs> uh, and it not only burns, but you see it actually damage his eye. Uh, his other eye is still functional, but it was damaged by the fire. And he just scream like you could see like he was opening his mouth maybe to say you or i'll kill you or some some troll like thing and as he's opening his mouth and as his fingers coming up that the jar just pops him or the the skin just pops him right in the face it bursts open and this stuff just oozes on his face uh and it also acts a lot like an acid Mm. Um, which he's not a fan of uh, any more than fire. And Cackle, it is now your turn. You are clinging to the wall, but you're only a few feet off the ground. And uh, um, yeah, I'd be happy this. to drop down to the mm-hmm. uh, to the ground. That's a free and, action. Uh, I'm sorry. That's a free action that won't cost you anything. Okay. And uh, well, as he is an immediate threat, I'll take a couple of shots at Mr. Battle Troll here. Okay. See if we can't put him out of his misery. Let's see, that's a 15, 29 to hit. <laughs> Is a hit? Yes. yes. This guy does not mess around with his bow. I'll tell mm-hmm. you that much. Mm-hmm. All right, that's three. Uh, seven points for the first arrow. And we'll shoot again. 18, 27 for the second arrow. That is also a hit. And that is eight points for that one. Eight points. So y'all have done... Uh... Please die. 
Yes. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> he is not so dead lucky. yet. No, he, is, he has <laughs> taken a good deal, little damage before he ever stepped foot in here. Uh, but he's also a battle troll, and he has a lot of hit points. Uh, but you've done 24 points of damage before he could even act. And uh, the other goblins are moving towards you, Taka. Actually, no one has... I mean, obviously, the battle troll noticed you when you shot him with two arrows, Cackle. Um, but right. the other, the, the goblins actually haven't noticed you yet and they've only seen Taka and they're moving towards you, Taka, but very slowly, <laughs> uh, and they will not be here in this round. Uh, so now it is the battle trolls turn. He bends down and just starts barreling towards you, Taka. And he actually, like one of his hands comes down like a, like a gorilla in a full charge is one hand is actually assisting the super long and he is just screaming inarticulate rage at you. And, um, will a 24 beat your armor class? Ouch. That will, yes. Mm, that is unfortunate. Uh, but your luck had to give out at some point. Uh, it did. and uh, let's face it. Y'all have both been doing exceedingly well. Mm -hmm. And, um, ooh, that is 28 points of damage and, okay. uh, total, uh, including his strength bonus. He, he actually rolled two, I, I rolled two D 10 and he rolled two tens. So, uh, he, he rolled, this was, and he just caught you flat and you were trying to get out of the way. Uh, but He's huge. <laughs> and he catches you, and he does actually successfully also knock you down. He uh, also I, goes down to the ground. I have a pr improved evasion. Okay. Uh, and it knocks you flat to the ground. And you realize that there were scenarios in this that, like, you might have died instantly if he had caught you just right. Uh, because he's a huge battle troll, and he's slammed into you. Uh, fortunately, he did not land on top of you, but you both have gone down. And it's actually your turn, Taka. You are prone. Okay, so... Uh, I am going to remain prone, but I am going to use wholeness of body to restore my hit points, mm -hmm. which I can do once per day, I believe. At 7th level or higher, a monk can heal her own wounds. She can heal a number of hit points of damage equal to twice her current monk level each day, and she can spread this healing out among several uses. So I am a level 10, I can heal 20 hit points, so I am going to go back to full hit points. You center yourself and center your chi, and you feel your body knitting itself back together, a technique, a highly advanced technique that many monks do not possess. And it is your turn, Cackle. All right. Um, all right, we've got a prone battle troll. Mm -hmm. So let's take a shot and see if, again, we can't put this thing down. All right, here we go. Get this big boy off me. Oh, and that is a 20, sir. <laughs> so please that double that is damage. is a 20. Uh, triple, actually. Oh, that that's right. This damage. That's right. <laughs> let's hear what that is. Oh, and let's see. Let me go back to my yeah plus two 24 points 24 points and i would like Please to go die. Ahead and roll the second one as well okay two yes still right yes uh that one is not a 20 um however let's see that's a 22 modified mm. well he is flat-footed right now so he does not get his dexterity bonus which is not right. inconsiderable so that does hit as well. So please do roll the damage. Okay, for that. and that will be another five points. Five points. Uh, so just so you know, the first one was enough to put him down. <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to see how much the second one did as well. Um, <laughs> so, piling it on. Piling uh, it on. Yes. Uh, so Taka, this troll who has knocked you down, you centered yourself and you're readying yourself for his attack, which is coming up next. And as he's raising his big meaty fist to just pound you into the ground, uh, you just see two arrows grow out of his skull. And one of them actually comes out of his uninjured eye. 
uh, and he just and it just quivers there for a moment, and then he just collapses to the ground. Now both of you know that he may not be out forever. Uh, this right. is you are you're both level ten. You've both been around the block, and especially you, Cackle, having associated with trolls and half trolls. Right. Uh, you know that even though he's taken fire and acid damage before, this damage he may be able to heal. And so if you do not put him out of his misery, uh, he may be getting up when you least expect it. Um, and But as you look up, you see the four goblins. They're still advancing on you. One of them has managed to put out his fire. The other two have kind of scraped off the the burning mold and they're, they're actually still advancing on you. You're a little surprised like, cause goblins are not particularly brave. Uh, you wonder if maybe they, they think that Midge may still be here and they're terrified not to. Um, but as they come forward, you feel cold. You feel something so cold. This is both of you, by the way. And Taka, you okay. have plenty of time to come up off the ground, by the way, cause this is not, we're no longer in straight combat. Um, but you feel a dark cold. And both of you have had encounters with the undead before. And you know this cold. In fact, Taka, you once had a companion and you watched a lich just suck the life right out of them. And this was the cold that you felt. I'm not saying this is a lich. I'm saying that's what you felt. And you see something come up behind two of the guards and it raises up its hands and touches them on the neck and you see them writhe and fall to the ground dead. And there's a figure behind them, but it's very difficult to make out. It is shrouded in darkness. The only thing you can see for sure is a humanoid shape and two glowing eyes we are not in combat would anyone like to do anything uh i'm going to without taking my eyes off of the spectral creature that's been uh, that just sort of showed up uh, out of nowhere uh, i'm gonna reach into my pack pull out my single flask of oil flip it into the air and have it crash onto the back of the troll in uh, preparation for uh, lighting it on fire you are entirely successful in doing that there's nothing to okay. stop you uh, Taka is going to see that happen and is going to light the oil on fire, not mm -hmm. wishing to take any chances, uh, while also maintaining eye contact with the spectral figure. Uh, the figure behind it, is it dwarf shaped or dwarf height? That is an excellent question. Oh. Uh, it is humanoid shaped. Uh, you think that it is either the size of a human or there's something about it that you think may that just especially you cackle because you're so familiar with halves um maybe half elf Ugh. you're not quite sure why uh but there's something Probably about the it. stench <laughs> <laughs> um there's something about it that, that gives that and so you imagine both of you are staring at this thing this ungodly figure that's shrouded in darkness with glowing eyes and neither of you Take the one eye from it and cackle, you just go splash. And Taka, you just go <laughs> Vroom, and this and it just burns up in front of you. And in fact, the light actually beats back the darkness slightly, and you get a full look at its face, which is somewhat desiccated, somewhat mummified. You can see part of the teeth through the face. It is clearly, not that that's a surprise, some kind of undead. And it smiles at both of you, and it's horrifying to look at. It slips to the side. Both of the goblins are trying to get away from it. It moves to one, touches it, and it shudders and dies. It moves over to the other one, touches it. I'm assuming neither of you are stopping it. Uh, it shudders and dies. And it turns back to you and it says in a horrifying, empty, hollow voice, I was so looking forward to taking the rod from this creature because it would dash its hopes. I was so looking forward to taking the rod because I knew 
it would cause the most harm. I once left a child alive after killing its mother just so I could watch it starve to death. But think of the suffering that I will cause when I take this rod and the world will end. <laughs> and I want both of you to roll a knowledge check. Uh, that is a 19 for me. Well, I've got knowledge. Well, okay. Well, yeah. I've got uh, specialization in local and, nat and nature, but... I have arcana and religion, so that's plus two to both of those. So that's a 21. Okay, and what did you roll Lo local, with the... I local you knowledge the, wouldn't help, would it? Uh, actually, yes. I want you to use oh. your local knowledge. Uh, that would be a 21, then. Okay. Um, so both of you come to a similar conclusion in a very different way. Uh, you, Taka, you heard once about creatures that steal for a living. That if they are foiled in the act of stealing, in the most, like, if they were so close, but then they failed, that sometimes they come back and they are filled with a desire to steal yet more. But the thing that triggered it was, you know that they, they live, they feed off the suffering of the stealing, not just the stealing itself. Whereas you, Cackle, you actually know who this is. This was a half-elf thief. You even met him years ago when you were still starting out. And you know that he went forward for a huge score where he was going to sneak into Beltrain and he was going to steal the princess, who is now the queen. Um, he was going to kidnap her and ransom her. And he succeeded. He got her almost out. And then he literally tripped. He literally tripped. And the, the details don't matter. But she was able to get away. He was caught and he was hung publicly. And he was a half-elf. And you don't know why, but you're sure it's him. You're sure it's him. He has become a tomb or a sepulcher wraith. And he's here for the rod. And I need y'all to roll for initiative. What's his name? His name is Gaben. <laughs> okay. And Cackle. And he rolled a one. A I think he's just luxuriating initiative. in his monologuing. Uh, so uh, please well for me. go first. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has to finish chewing his scenery before he can get started. Uh, Taka is going to take a moment to do a big quip um, <laughs> and say, well... I've had some big boys on top of me before, but that oh takes my. the cake. And then nod toward the garish figure and go, unfortunately today, you won't get what you want. And... Okay. I, uh, Taka is going to... Taka's going to make a break for it. Yes. Uh, running perpendicular to our friend. I believe is now to my left. Okay, so I'm going to cut right at full speed, which I think is now 40 feet. Uh, let me double check that though, sorry. Uh, it might even be well, a full out run should be ti four times your move, move rate. Yeah, I just need to figure out what my move rate actually is, whether it's double or whether it's an additional. No. Uh, oh, uh, yes, I do. It's actually double, so I move 60 feet, which means if I'm running at a full sprint, that's 240 feet. So I should be... Uh, I'm going to go run back to the entrance that we came in, whichever. That's a flat-out 20. <laughs> uh, so 
you make that run, and uh, he is unsuccessful in grabbing you. And he, you see his face twist in. He was not expecting that. He was expecting you to fight him. And you didn't. You're just like, mm, I'm gone. And he runs for it. And Cackle, uh, it is your turn. I'm assuming that he turned toward his direction. Correct. Um, I'm going to hide. Okay. <laughs> while he's <laughs> while he's looking away. Um, let me see what my hide is that he's going to have to compete with. And good luck, buddy. Uh, it's a 36. Okay. Uh, you melt into the shadows. Uh, with part of the uh, ceiling collapsing, uh, that's not too hard. Uh, you manage to hide. And the wraith or sepulchral ghost or whatever he's called doesn't pay the slightest bit of attention to you because he knows you don't have the rod. Ah. He knows that Taka does and begins to chase after. Taka, what are you, where, where are you trying to go? What is your ultimate goal here? Uh, Taka is going to go back out the way they came. Okay, now that is, that's because going back through the trolls, going back through the tunnels, through the slime, out the uh, moat. Yep, that's the okay. one. Um, uh, which I should be able to do with the run that I'm still doing. I should at least be at the trolls room by now. Okay. Um, at 240 feet. Um, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, bless this house and the dice that are rolled <laughs> in it. I would like you to roll three times. And you may use all your right. dexterity all three times. Let me know what those rolls okay. are. First roll. First roll is a 22. Second roll is a flat 20. Third roll is an 18. Okay. Cackle. Mm -hmm. You have a few options. This creature, this spirit, whatever it is, has chased after Taka. Right. Uh, it's not concerned with you at all. You can get out of here. Yeah, but um, I can't leave because he has my rod. Um, that's the problem. <laughs> so um, if you chase after him, you will literally be following the spirit. Right. Uh, and it's a good chance it might notice you. Right. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is um, I am going to first I want to see if there's any handy rope uh, lying around anywhere in the vicinity um, of the of the great room. I'm just going to say yes, because it's more fun that okay. way. Okay. <laughs> um, then I'm going to tie off the rope and go out one of the broken windows and uh, shimmy down uh, to the ground floor and uh, head over to the opening where I'm assuming he's going to be popping out at some time in the near future. Okay. So this is what happens. Uh, because of your successful roles, Taka, you make your way down the hole. You make your way past the trap. You even remember that it's there and, and not to set it off again. Uh, you you just, just dart through the slime, not even taking a single point of damage. You come out through the moat. You hit the ground running, and you just leap. And whatever is in the moat like doesn't even stand a chance, even as it's coming out. Uh, you've already leaped over, and even though the ground is sodden, you land. Um, and as you do, you see Cackle coming down as well. Uh, and you see this spirit, whatever it is, flowing out of the area after you. And the fate of the Rod of Seraphim, who ends up with it? This ghost this lich is it taka the monk is it cackle who has so much writing on it y'all aren't gonna get to find out because that's the end uh. of this side quest <laughs> uh if you want to find out what happens 
then you need to keep listening. And when we get back to the main quest, the fate of these adventurers will be revealed. Lee, thank you so much for playing Taka, uh, playing Taka the Monk today. Yeah, well done, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, and uh, James, thank you so much for <laughs> uh, playing the uh, nefarious cackle. Absolutely, it was fun. And if uh, you, gentle listeners, want to find out what's going on, do me a favor. Go to iTunes and put in Chafing Armor. I guarantee you it's the only one that's going to come up. And give us a review if you're enjoying this. It helps other people find the show. And let us know. Let them know that it's just a bunch of big, dumb fun. And we will be talking to you soon. Bye, everybody. Good night, everybody. Bye.